Andrew, look at us. We dress like fans. Let's admit it. There's a better way to do this. I'll admit it. And it's going to EliteSports.com using code SQUARE at checkout. There you can shop the whole list of Texas State athletes that they have signed under the Elite Sports brand. We're talking about custom brands for each athlete. And when you buy from them, you get to buy uh, and support, you know, athletes under the NIL deal. So it's a great way to give back to the program, give back to Bobcat straight up and support your favorite podcast. Which is squaring around. You, you like this one the most. Tired of winning the tailgate, but losing the games? We can't help that. But we can tell you what the hell is up with each team and what's going on across sunny San Marcos. Texas State fans, get on your feet. You're listening to Squaring Around with Jacob Rodriguez and Andrew Zimmel. What's up, everybody? Welcome to... I was gonna say deep in the heart of tailgate that's a fucking wrong show that's a defunct show Zim. like a show from four years ago the show from four years ago welcome to squaring around i'm jacob rodriguez that's texas state sports pros andrew zimmel this is a show where we talk about everything texas state and texas state football and texas state uh we got a lot of shit to talk about today um i do my impending skin cancer that i got going on here i do have a confession to make father zimmel though and it's that i deleted our republic of football number five episode like three or four times <laughs> on youtube because i kept was like was this the one and i thought i did dele- i had it up twice or three times and so i deleted one and not the other and then the whole cataclysm of events so that's why you saw that one uh uploaded two or three more times on there yeah i got like five notifications i was like okay cool i'm glad that we post the same episode a couple times gotta get those okay. those view count that view count up i guess well and this is the thing fathers and i also have another confession <laughs> Because on our last Republic of Football podcast, shout out Dave Campbell's, uh, I uploaded our episode, right? It was fine. We've got almost three or 400 views on that, our last one. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching, everybody. But I also uploaded that one twice because I forgot our artwork. So it was just the Dave Campbell's graphic. I was like, ah, shit. We did so much for this on a branding side. I should upload this again. <laughs> so we like catapulted to the page again. <laughs> For our last week's episode. So my bad, everybody on the network. <laughs> oh wait, hold on. How many uh how many views do we get on the second time you posted it? Uh, we got 400... like hundred and twenty more. So we okay, but does the four hundred count to the next one or does it just say hundred and twenty on there? Which is why I wasn't concerned the first time, right? Because I was like, this should just be an update, right? Like all I'm doing, I didn't touch the audio, I didn't touch the words on the fucking graphic or anything. Mm-hmm. All I did was just upload a picture onto the thing, but it was as if I uploaded it again. And I was like, Yeah, <laughs> I hope Ish doesn't text me. And he didn't. So he didn't. That's good. I I did I tell you that I, I wonder uh, if he I, was like, is this an ROF week for them? Because we do every other week. <laughs> I I like to think that we're front of mind for him. I'm going to imagine with like college football and college basketball, like coming around, probably not like, the I first think we're thing like, about. we're like a top 15 issue for him, you know, and we're not, Ooh. and we're not 10. <laughs> uh, that that's pushing it. I would say top 25 for sure. Top 25. Yeah. Maybe, maybe, but here's my point. Well, it's point we don't need our hands held or anything. So it's not like he has to constantly check on us or anything. Yeah. But neither did my like ex-girlfriend and like, you know, she did like attention. I do like attention from Ish. Did I tell you I sent him an idea on a Twitter voice memo? Oh, I really? voice memoed him a, an idea and just radio silence. He was like, well, okay. Which is fine. I Look, it was an idea. It's a pitch, right? You give it to the boss and you see what he says. And he said, no, that's fine. It's all good. It's all good. I'm not taking it personally. It's all good. He didn't say no. He just didn't say anything. I guess he didn't which say is, anything. Is that, that's probably worse, no? Or is that delivered? Good? Nah. I'll take it. I'll take it. Okay. Um, before we have too much fun, Zimmel, I want to get to like one sad headline. Uh, and that's the death of Ryan Mallett, who's a friend of G.J. Kinney. He's also featured in a 2006 issue of Dave Campbell's Texas Football Magazine side. This is right before, you know, G.J. and him. He's an elite 11 quarterback, Ryan. Uh, but he passed away, um, you know, just a couple days ago. Um, just wanted to give our reverence to this, you know, doing this podcast, just being a journalist, being a sports fan. You start to realize, hey, these are people with, you know, friends, family, you know, people that care deeply about them. So I just wanted to, you know, share our support for the Mallet family. And, of course, you know, GJ, he was like a longtime friend. 
And people were saying, you know, Ryan had such a crazy arm in high school, like when they were doing that Dave Campbell shoot that he threw the ball like from the one end zone to the 30 yard line, the other one. That's how crazy this guy's arm was. He's a high school football coach in uh, Arkansas. So shout out to him, his players, um, his family during this time. Um, yeah, you know. 36, way too, way too, way too young to to pass away. And I haven't saw what the cause of death was yet either, Jacob. Drowning. But was it really? That's Drowning. awful. You you hate to see that um, to anybody, but especially a high school football coach, because you and I both talk about how important coaching is. Um, you know, we've had coaches on the show before. They play in, in huge impact on young men and women's lives. So for Ryan Mallett to die or to pass away at 36 is just really tragic. Yeah, no, I mean, I I still think of coaches that I've had in um, elementary, middle, high school, you know, uh, didn't have any coaches in college, obviously. Look at me. I mean, well, fake, the fake coaches fake. that we talked to, I mean, like, yeah. you know, we, we both we both talk about Coach Z being one of the, our favorite coaches to talk to. And it's because, you know, the impact that she's had on our lives. Uh, Coach Woodard, another one. Um, Trout Chisholm, another one. You know what I mean? Trout, another one where like they don't coach us, but you can clearly tell the impact they have on young men and women's lives. And, you know, Mallet was giving it back, you know, played elite college be- or college uh, football, played in the oh, NFL. Yeah. You know, he's giving it back to his community and, you know, to see him pass away this uh, young is just really sad. Yeah. Great quarterback at Arkansas. He drafted to the Patriots and spent some time in Houston with the Texans too. seven year NFL career. I so. also wanted to break up to some of the sad with some news on the ROF side. Uh, this is from the head honcho, a.k.a. San Marcos, the supervillain, Mike Craven. <laughs> The new Sam Houston pod on Republic Football Network is just 11 of the 13 FBS programs represented by the entire network. So we've got two more left to unveil. And I guess you could do the math, too, if you really cared. I think it's like UTEP and um, somewhere else. I don't know. They just uh, announced like Houston and a couple others. So if you're a Republic of Football fan, there's going to be more stuff coming out. And shout out to March the Pod. That's uh, the Sam Houston one. This is a really good way to segue into your dumbass tweet about me and Sam Houston state. So I'll, I'll set it up here. Shout out Sam Houston state. Here's the deal. I was looking at the tech state schedule for 2024, which is not this season, but next season. We all know that Texas state and Sam Houston state play. We've talked about it many times on this podcast. I was looking at it being like, Holy shit, this is a really good like deal. Arizona state. You know, I'm a lifelong uh, sun devil fan. Lamar is going to come to town. UTSA is coming to town. It's going to be the biggest game on the schedule for 2024. And then we play at what NRG stadium in Houston against Sam Houston state. I said, this is a great time to be a fan. Your dumbass decided to say like, Oh, congrats to Zimmel for learning. We play Sam Houston state. no, no, that's not what I'm saying. I'm just saying the entire slate of games. Well, plus the South you, are no, be great. let's be honest here, Zimmel. You did tweet and delete something. <laughs> and you were like, if we do play Sam Houston in 2024. No, I, I had a spelling mistake. I'm trying to be better at that. Like, let's be real here. I'm trying no, to be better know. at that. You tweeted and deleted. So who's I knew I knew we were playing Sam Houston State. We talked about it at nauseum on this fucking podcast. I like, have the I open knew record that. request for it, yeah. Don't yeah, so don't you tweeted that and then to add insult to injury, adjective, adjective, you're getting this fucking called out by the grammar Nazis on Twitter, being like it's not actually an adjective. Then I got grouped into it because they said those idiots don't know the difference. No, no, I got no. grouped into it. Not, that wasn't that. So if you old, go on to our Twitter, <laughs> if you go that's on to our Twitter on you. Yeah, they were dunking on me. But I also, the next tweet I had, I did ratio them because I said, that I just caught you in our nerd catcher 3000. Yeah, good <laughs> that cover. Guy fell good right cover, that Jacob. Yeah. Good cover. So you threw shade at me, your co host, and then you messed up on the adjective. So, like, yeah. I don't want to hear it. Okay. I kind, of a big, kind of a big oopsie. Also on that Sam Houston thing, if you'll remember, that's the entire reason we were once upon a time verified on Twitter because I tried to buy Twitter blue so I could correct the fucking typo on the Sam Houston thread. So honestly, big oopsies all around. <laughs> it's big oopsies on you. I'm getting pulled down with you. This is my Titan fucking submarine is you. <laughs> well, You're my uh, submersible. <laughs> you're my titanic i'll be your jack 
Yeah, you you'll be, be my, my rose. Good. Can you paint me like one of your French girls? I can. That's nice. What is it, a sapphire? A diamond. A very rare diamond. Jack, I want you to draw me like one of your French girls. Wearing this. All right. Wearing only this. The door is big enough for both of us, Jake. Uh, I wanted to to talk about this is something I had held on to from last week. We had such a kind of shit week for headlines and stuff last week that I ended up talking about a movie basically. And we got a bunch of takes off. Um, but uh, the kind of impact that hashtag take back Texas has had on the entire recruiting atmosphere at Texas state, I think is so crazy and informative too. You look at women's basketball, crazy new setup, hashtags, graphics, posts on social, Men's basketball, same deal. Uh, football, obviously. You guys are paying attention to this podcast. It's the same thing. Tennis, golf. Everybody's doing something now, Zim. All right. Tennis and golf, I will say that that, that might be one of those things where like, hey, football's doing this. We probably should jump on that. Do not pull my women's basketball program into this because my they've favorite. they doing a good job. Paige Love has done an incredible job over there. Coaching's done a great job over there with their photos, with their Instagram. That was way before. When, when Spavadol was signed, they were like killing it on the social media game. So uh, while I agree with you, you know, uh, rising tide ra- or a uh, 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 high tide raises all ships. Let's, uh, you know, but I like where you're coming from. Let's not get too excited. Because no, but I think it, good. it is kind of like a, you see some success and that it's easy, I think, for the women's team specifically, who just came off one of their best years in the past, what, five at least, um, you know, they almost won the Sunbelt Conference Championship. So I feel like it should be better for them now to be like, oh, this is our brand. We're all right. And here's here's the other thing. Let's let's pull back the curtain over here. Mr. Grand Wizard of Oz. There's like two social media interns that run all these accounts. So odds are that they're like getting worked to death in football. And they're also like, you know what? I'm already posting about football. Let's use these photos for basketball. Let's get this thing going. Cause you're, they're all, there's like the same three people who run all these accounts. So that's part of the thing is like reason two. Well, that's like, it goes into getting recruits, right? At the end of the day, people oh, yeah, want to feel wanted. So like you, if you're trying to go after someone who's like a pretty highly touted, either high school senior or junior, even in our case, um, but even like transfers, like the, people want to go where they're wanted, you know, and if they go somewhere and it's just kind of like half ass kind of like, Hey, we have a, your name on the football end zone complex and it's going to switch to an ad every once in a while. Like, uh, you know, that's not exactly the best. So I, I think what they're doing now is, uh, different and better than what we've seen too. When we were yes, on campus. I, I, I can agree with that, but I do believe that it is the coaching and like face to face recruiting a, the success of the programs is B, the social media is cool for us. It's cool for sophomores and freshmen. I do not imagine there's a lot of juniors right now playing at the uh, state seven on seven tournament in college station thinking to themselves, I hope Texas state tweets about me. Right. I, just, like, I don't. I just uh, created a new kind of like, I guess, atmosphere too for potential recruits at Texas state you did? in my head just now you're listening to this. This is my pitch for you. All right. Imagine you're a highly touted recruit once upon a time. That would have been true if if Alan Zimmel hadn't thrown out your elbow. Yeah, you're walking down the steps right by the stallions, right? And then uh, you're you know you're with your coach or whatever. For this case, we'll assume it's Trouty. You're walking along. Trouty pulls over to the University Star news little thing where you get the papers out of. Turns to page two. Look who's on campus! It's Andrew Zimmel. And then you go wait, stop there, and you go to your rotary phone. Turn into KTSW. It's an ad about Andrew being on campus. Dang. Student Media Times, Texas State Athletics. Sharks, here's my pitch. I like it. <laughs> Not a bad idea. We'll dun, take dun, it. Dun, 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 dun. This is where you, 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 you excellent Photoshop guy over here. Put me on Mark Cuban's body. <laughs> Don't worry. I got you. Speaking of recruits, speaking of signees, speaking of a bunch of stuff, the class of 2024 for Texas State football is already... Hastily filling up. We just signed a quarterback from San Antonio? A true freshman quarterback? Heck, well, it could be, you know. Brad Jackson, Texas State 2024, potentially. He said he's 100% committed to the Texas State University Bobcats. Hey, why don't you have him on your show? Why would I care? 
I'm about to commit. I was gonna say you say he's 100 percent committed. Does he count yet? I don't know. Is he is he one of? Is that 52 now for you, or is that like a new? No. Well, that's in that's, a, that's new... in a new list. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. At some point, right. I guess either like midway point of this season, I'm gonna have to start seeing who they have in 24, and that'll be a whole different fucking mistake. Oh, also, actually, on this same fucking thing, I just got a comment on our YouTube talking about this shit. The comments reads, stop bringing up the 51 or 52. Nobody cares. Just no, it's keep it vindication for the 52, actually. Oh, oh, but they were talking specifically about Davon Martin. You remember that guy who I DM'd on Twitter? And I was like, <laughs> are you in or out? They're right. He did technically commit. He did not sign, though, and he wouldn't have been on that list. But you made me feel better. So thank you. I'll put your tweet up. <laughs> Shout out, shout out the loyal Square Round fans for vindicating Jacob Rodriguez. Anyway, Brad Jackson, uh, he's a three-star quarterback at a San Antonio Reagan high school. Ooh. Yeah, so seems like it could be fun. I don't Remember know. the last uh, San Antonio quarterback we had that we were really high on? Who? Vin Marcus. He's from, no, he was from MacArthur, wasn't he? Yeah, in San Antonio. Well, yeah, but he... you said Reagan, didn't you? No, you just a San Antonio area quarterback. Yes. Oh, okay. Yeah. I really liked Vit out of college. I, I, the thing I loved about Vit is you like Vit out of college or out of high school. Out of college, right? Out of college, yeah. We hang around the bars. You no, came on school, this podcast. Bad. Full disclosure again, behind the curtain. Came on this podcast, said I look like crap. You're like, you look tired, man. You okay? Um, and you, you look like you need to moisturize, man. You <laughs> have been getting dog walked to this podcast. Well, getting moisturized, sir. Last dog week walk. he did this show. I was sunburnt like a lobster. I looked awful. My skin is peeling. Like, oh, I, I might, in a couple of years, we might be having a completely different conversation. You about need your daily sunscreen. You know, last week we talked about the importance of hydration, the, uh, the old Tom Herman piss chart. You know, <laughs> talk about the daily importance of uh, daily moisturizer. I work the morning for- show. Do you see any bags on my eyes? No, I'm start doing this show from the Houston fucking medical center here pretty quick. <laughs> Um, the way you know that uh, Texas State twenty four two is cooking is that all these teams are fucking, or all these coaches are using adjectives online. Boom, pow, wham, smash. That, that's not an adjective, though. I guess I was humbled online by our boy Zach Hamilton, a humble, po- <laughs> a humble podcast listener, um, and cooked me also. Yes, you say I'm getting dog walked on this podcast, but your signal keeps breaking up, so it makes me feel better because I'm gonna have to cut out like half of your discipline. <laughs> <laughs> the only way like you have an intelligible thought is because of me on this podcast. You're welcome. <laughs> um, Tough times. I, I had some. I had some fun online last weekend too with Ben Bell. Um, you know, he was the guy who got like four or five sacks at the spring game. Ridiculous. Completely blew up a running back too at the spring game. Um, if you were listening to the stream of the game, obviously you didn't hear anything because they didn't talk anything about the game. I don't know why, uh, but there was actually going on the field. They had a lot of interviews. Uh, but he ended up losing this thing um, all about the best hair in the Sunbelt. This is by at Sunbelt underscore sports or Funbelt Sports on Twitter. Uh, it was the Funbelt Lettuce Award Championship. Guess what the final fucking tally was, Zim? 50.5% for Drew Brewer out of Southern Miss. And Ben Bell had 49.5% of the vote. Ah! I had two posts online about getting our numbers up for this guy. Tough. Yeah, no, it just shows once again the Texas State fan base. Not about it. Little I don't know. Little I don't really honestly, those those deals, those posts don't mean anything to me anymore. They're kind of fun though. Losses. I don't know. It's something well, we after... don't really do because I'm not good at that shit. And like uh no. you cats cats corner, they had like a pretty good like bracket for like best best sunbelt or not sunbelt athlete. I think it was just Texas State athlete. And they like had these things leading up. To you have a show. history of you have a history of going against the brackets, though. You yeah, I do. Real, there's there's a, there's a there's a long history of Jacob not liking those Sun Belt brackets. They're tough, man. But you know, we get a guy in the championship. What am I going to do? Not vote for him? No, no, no. Hundred percent. I voted for him too. Like, it totally makes sense. And you know, like I said, none of these things really matter to me anymore after we lost like best college town. Yeah. I think it was like Statesboro. We lost it to the... or something, and that makes absolutely no sense. The big thing was when, um, I guess this is like the impetus for brackets too. And the whole thing is like the barstool best bar. Remember that shit when may lose was like a super regional qualifier or something like that. Yeah. That's pretty good. They still have that banner in there as they should. 
From 2018? Yeah, I think it's from yeah 2018 or 2019. I can't remember which year. So let me get this straight. Malu's raised a banner before my basketball program. <laughs> yeah, they did. And the golf team also raised a <laughs> banner before that. And technically, the baseball team raised a virtual banner this week. Did you see this shit? This is the National Invitational Baseball Tournament. And you should use quotation marks when you say all of that because it has five followers online. <laughs> and it's, uh, yeah, I mean, it's just like a virtual NIT, basically. And so they put all the the teams in there. Tech State came out on top. You, you want to know the virtual me, score for this? Yeah. You showed me this, and I was, like, taken aback by how dumb it is. So no games are played. It's literally just on paper. Mm-hmm. So it's like, like we've seen baseball, anything can happen, right? Like a team can get hot, a pitcher could have a bad day. So, but they didn't take any of that into account. And they were like, if these teams played on paper, the worst way to judge sports, Texas State would come out on top. What was the final score, Jacob? The final score, by the way, this came down between us and the University of California, Irvine. Uh, 10 to 5. Slam Marcos coming alive. I just <laughs> honestly shout out to them. The it, I know it took time to put it all together. And I imagine that there is like some math involved. And as journalists, math is not our strong suit, right? But at the same time, like I make like the updated NBA list. Like I have a running a top 100, top 50, right? Like for the season. My friends think I'm insane for doing that. My insane lists make more sense than to do this. So, <laughs> I mean, good for Texas State, but like at the same time, like it does, like this matters the absolute least of everything we've talked about on this podcast ever. This thing is like the least important to me. I'm watching the stream for it right now. It's like a video game almost. Wow, it is a video game. This is crazy. The entire stream is 45 minutes. You can go through this entire game online. Wow, this is crazy. Look at that. Again, I there's like a lot of things I would do before then. <laughs> a lot of things. Well, shout out to whoever's just printing awards for us at this point, to be honest. Well, yeah. And also, you you don't like Sunbelt Brackets. I am the biggest anti-award guy in the world. So, you know, that is, we go hand in hand. Hey, speaking like of awards or just kind of like things that are nice to feel good about online, uh, Coach Leftwood, he's the offensive coordinator at Texas State, named to a football offensive coordinator of the year watch list. You know who else is on that watch list? Kendall Bryles. So, you know, ah, literally ah, a watch list ah, in this case. Ah, God, <laughs> a no my, fly list. In my some heart. Oh. Yeah. I had to talk. I talked about Kendall Bryles today because TCU got a got mm-hmm. a commit. And I was like, you know, he's got a good relationship with high schools. Like, but I don't trust that guy. I don't like Kendall Bryles. Nah, man. So, remember when he was rumored to be the new Texas State head coach? Like, the when Spavadol got hired, they were like, hey, Kendall Bryles, watch out. I was about to enroll at the University of Texas at San Antonio to get a second undergraduate degree. That is such a fucking slap in the face to sports fans, football fans, just a decent human beings in general, to be honest. Uh, but yeah, I'm, oh, hold I'm on. That's gonna... ultimately, I'm glad we got GJ, as you can tell. That's going to prickle some feathers here. If you want to tweet at Jacob, at Squaring Pod, that's at Squaring Pod on Twitter. If you disagree with that take, please tweet at him. Not at me, at decent him. Human, decent human beings and hanging out with Kendall Bryles. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Like, I'm not a fan either, but I know that there's a faction of this fan base who was very excited when Kendall Bryles' name was brought up. It was uh, like a how fast can we win take, you know, like, do you want results or do you want morality? Basically, you know, you're either but, like with the devil or the angel. This is your last chance. After this, there is no turning back. You take the blue pill. The story ends. You wake up in your bed and believe whatever you want to believe. You take the red pill. You stay in Wonderland. And I show you how deep the rabbit hole goes. No, 100%. But also, that's not a guarantee. Like, nothing at Texas State when it comes to football is a guarantee. Mm. We could have the 2001 Miami Hurricane, and I'm not guaranteeing you a a winning season. I don't know what the hell we did. Uh, I'm not guaranteeing anything. So to say, like, oh, we got to get Kendall Browse because we can win now. No, we don't. 
No, we don't. No, that's not a guarantee. And then it's like, okay, we soiled our souls for what? For five wins? Nah, forget it. Not happening. <laughs> We're five and seven? Damn it. Didn't work. Yeah. yeah. I don't and, know. It, it, it takes what it takes like what this program is doing now, right? To get formative change. It takes like an entire buy-in across the sport, like not just from the athletics department, from the entire administration, from I mean, it takes a new groups. president. Yeah. It takes a new president, a new AD, a new head coach, and like 15 to 20 years of mediocrity. Mm-hmm. Like <laughs> that's what it took for like like big change. And it took multiple Texas State athletes to go professional and then give back to their university. So it's like, there's a lot going on. Speaking of that, Zim, another person is throwing money in your face after you uh, made your remarks about Texas State being losers, teachers, people who don't have any money. Another person throwing money in Zim's face. Benny and Michelle Boy. If you recognize that name, they own a few auto dealerships and a few, a lot of other things, obviously, too, if they're just throwing out money. Um, but they're now the 78th members of the Texas State Heroes Group, and that's the group of people who have donated a million dollars or more towards Texas State University. This is also uh, going towards the Johnny Johnny and Natalie Weissman Football Complex Renovation Edition, which is a super big mouthful to say every time we talk about this, what we used to just call the South End Zone Project or the South End Zone Complex Project. Is that a million dollars with inflation or? I think you know, those are tax free when you give like that. I uh, shout out to them. I'm happy for them. And it does it every, you know what? If you want to prove me wrong, Texas State fans by giving more money than God to the Texas State athletics, have at it. I'm good with that. I'm not going to complain. You, you've you honestly made them. How much money have you probably made them between uh, the first four million that Johnny and Natalie Weissman <laughs> pledged, right? And then we had Don on the podcast. We're talking about former athletes giving up, right? I'm not going to claim Jeff Foster was you. You know, it's kind of a gray area for us. <laughs> uh, but let's say half of that, right? <laughs> so that's already like four and a half million dollars plus this one. And then the guy from the baseball team, that's like seven mils, Zim. All I did was say that we don't give enough money. And then everybody's like, you know what? Prove that fat white guy wrong. You know what? Let's <laughs> take him chocolate. down. I'm yeah. good with it, dude. Like I said, I'm glad I can be the glad I can be the fire starter for this fan base that absolutely needs somebody like me, right? Yeah. And that's I guess it kind of goes into that other point I was talking about too, is just like the need to continuously push out uh recruits and success, no matter how inflated some of those graphics may be at times, and uh just other things <laughs> to continuously get money and stuff like that too. We're 65 days away from kickoff at McLean Stadium against the Baylor Bears. Wouldn't it be sweet if we beat Baylor? It'd be sick. I'm debating on whether or not to travel up for Waco. I've already gotten, you know, uh, I'm not already gotten, but I'm a member of San Antonio Media, so I could definitely get press passes for that. You get press pass, uh, dude. Come on, come on. You could totally get press passes wherever you want by just being like, "Hey, by the way, I do a podcast." That's true. Now, and we're also a uh, Sunbelt credentialed too now for everybody. Mm, now, I finally, can't... I just sent an email, and two minutes later, we're in the game, baby. I... Cannot wait to go to a Sunbelt game. I'll fly down for Troy and Texas Day. Ooh. That'd be sick. Be fun. Yeah. I, I really would like to go. Maybe we could just do that every year. We just go to either the basketball tournament or uh, the softball tournament, which this year is actually in sunny San Marcos, the softball side. Or, or hear me out, Texas Day gets good enough to go to a bowl game, and we go to that every year. True. True, true, true. Yeah. The or, race is still on between us and UTSA to get a bowl win first. Or Omaha? Omaha. Omaha. What? Yeah. That'd be fun. What's the barrier of entry you think for a typical fan for tickets, cost of travel, stuff like that? Uh, under four hundred bucks, easy. What do you mean, like for for Omaha for a bowl game? Like, what what do you think? Omaha what, first. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Like, I think it would. I got my hotel at the shadiest shady place ever, and it cost me less than 400 bucks for four nights so if you were going to go just for one game right you're going to one game in omaha i mean i got tickets for as cheap as 17 bucks uh beer was pretty cheap all things considered there's like six bucks um time and omaha is a nice place to go to a bowl game i imagine a little bit more expensive for you and i as like old crusty alums now for students i i mean probably a cheaper deal because you get student tickets and stuff 
but it also depends on the ball game, right? We go to college football playoffs. Those tickets are kind of expensive. Go to uh, the Boca Raton Bowl, sponsored by like Progressive. Yeah, maybe. Probably could make that a pretty easy trip. And I also do want to do a live tailgate of this show before I go into the press box and tweet about the game and ask GJ questions and stuff, too. Uh, so if you have a tailgate group or want me to just pull up with a table and a chair and uh, zoom in with Zimmel virtually and do a show at your tailgate event, I'll at your boy. I would love that. That'd be great. I'll pay my body. Andrew, we talk a lot about gear on this show. Of course, with the Public Football Podcast Network, we got to talk about our partnership with Homefield, the only place you should be getting any other sort of college branding gift. So if you need a good Christmas gift item, Father's Day, Mother's Day, whatever uh, ancillary holiday there is, and your significant other likes another team, buy from Homefield. I have a lot of friends that went to a and Homefield has a lot of good Aggie gear. They got some Bob Horn gear on there as well. And, of course, Texas Tech Red Raiders, they got stuff over there for them too. A lot of Homefield apparel. Uh, it is the number one spot, I think, to shop for. They actually Let announced the, the College World Series championship shirts that they have. And now they're also doing mystery box T-shirts. So it's like a secret launch that's going on. Pretty fire. I like that. I like that a lot, especially for somebody that say, say you got a friend who just loves college sports, period. They maybe they went to a school that didn't have a very good athletic program. A la, you know, maybe the one we talk about a lot and they want to be a t-shirt fan for another team. Jacob Rodriguez will make a voodoo doll out of them, but I will support them because I love home field apparel. And uh, top three shirts from last week, Tennessee Volunteers, Maryland Terps, and the Tennessee Retro Smoky Cartoon Tee. That's kind of sick. Tennessee's up there twice. So, you know. They put out new gear. That's why. Let's not get it confused. The real UT is the one that's up the road. Use code SQUARE at checkout. Home field. Kind of want a little bit of a break of football here, Zim. So let's talk about this men's basketball signing class. That's kind of fun. A lot of new faces in it. And, uh, you know, this is like a first time. Not, I don't want to say the first time for Coach Johnson because obviously he's had different hiring classes. You know, he got into it right after the Danny Casper situation, and so his first true class was like a year and a half later. Um, Mason's like second senior year, I guess. You know, because you had the pandemic too. Yeah, and the year of the pandemic. So this, I would say, is like obviously a clear, clean Johnson slate. Just all his guys that he wants to get, different pieces he's needing. Uh, different other things like that too and potentially we could have some more guys join ahead of their first game what is that i guess they play in like late november i thought it was like october yeah october or something i know they yeah. do a big media thing like three games into the football side so yeah i think it's like september october that they start things off they still got some time to add some more guys uh also you got to consider too that there's dudes who come on campus and have that open tryout and you never know those rec league heroes one of those guys might pop one of these days. The Brendan Snows of the world. Yeah. Yeah. But I'll tell you, if Brendan Snow esque type player ever joins the Texas State basketball team, that will be the time that I trade in my Bobcat gear for literally anywhere else. If a, if a dude that looks like, I love Brendan, the dude that looks like our best friend Brendan Snow, throw him up on the screen here, Jacob. But for a guy that looks like that coming on the court, we're done. Who's that guy? <laughs> That's funny. Uh, people were really big on Colton Benson. He's the West Point commit who is now at Texas State. By the way, I guess he's a veteran because that's how that works. You know, like you like serve basically. You're an active duty person when you're at West Point and you're, you know. But he didn't graduate. No, but you still are. Like, I think you you only need to be in the military for like 30 days to be like considered a veteran. So we got a Shane Gillis. Exactly. That's the okay. same situation. Similar, not the same, but similar for sure. Uh, well, I mean, he was at West Point for, I don't think he completed a season, but he committed, or he completed like six months or whatever. Yeah. That is something else. I would like to know why. <laughs> Wouldn't you? Yeah, it's interesting. You know? Yeah, he's uh, from that, this area ish. Uh, immediately. The James Bowie High School guy. Ooh. Immediately that raises the team GPA, though. Because you got to have like a 5.0 to go to West Point and be like, you know, a super athlete. So I would be I'd be curious to know why. Maybe it is he wants to be closer to home. Um, You know, we get our own. What would you call him? Tell him the captain. The captain. Yeah. Yeah. What do you because like, you know, white David Robinson, David. Well, I'm saying David Robinson was the admiral going to the Navy. What's West Point? The captain, like, you know, lieutenant, mm. the general. How tall is he? 
Uh, he is six seven. The big general or six one? He's just six one. Oh, the little general. The little general. Well, I guess you're trading off Mason Harrell, literally the little general, for this guy, a bigger little general. There it is. All these guys are Look over six we just... feet, by the way. Uh, Colton yeah, Benson, which... six one. Ryan Bolton, six ten. Chris Nix, six nine. Josh Ogaro, six six. Chris Turner, six seven. They tell me that size is important in the game of basketball, Jacob. Important. Important. We've got a guy from the Cayman Islands. I thought that was cool. Josh Ogaro. Yeah, Mark is the closest thing you're going to get to the islands. That was another fun uh, graphic, like teams who pretend they're at the beach and it's all the Sunbelt schools like that said no. And then it's Myrtle Beach, the coast of Carolina. Boo. <laughs> Shout out Fun Belt Sports. They put out fun stuff. I don't like making graphics like that. I'm not good at it. I suck at it. I'd let, rather let, just retweet somebody else. I'd rather steal content than make my own. Jacob Straight up. You know, I mean, you know, I do the real journalism work over here. So it's like I can just retweet a fun graphic every now and then. Real journalism work. Okay. <laughs> just like literate journalism work. Oh, what do we have to do to figure out this contract? That was easy. <laughs> oh, you need us to do this certain thing to book a guest? Okay, perfect. Here you go. Here's I do the... I do the legwork, the bare minimum of journalism legwork. Oh, hell yeah, dude. We're here. <laughs> yeah. So shout out men's basketball for signing, uh, what is it, five guys? Yeah. Tall guys. Five additions to the 2023-2024 team. Yeah, they're all new. Which is like, I was like, what do you mean? They're all new. Yeah, they're all new. They're additions to the fucking team. <laughs> <laughs> okay. We're finishing off with something a little unorthodox. I want to talk about team GPAs. <laughs> Because we constantly shit on the tennis team. Formerly, we did shit on the golf teams, both of them. That was until the golf team hung an NIT banner in our face. And the women's team had a really great year, too. No banner, but, you know, still. But they don't tweet at us. I, I want to put that out there. They never tweet at us. They never go they like, tweet hey, at us. And we suck. did shout them out a few times. And I didn't realize it. I guess I should have because the Sun Belt and uh, ESPN Plus but I was able to watch like half of the Sunbelt Conference golf tournament on ESPN+. Plus. So shout out that crazy deal we signed. It's a miracle your girlfriend stays with you. Because <laughs> I think that's like grounds for divorce. I come into the home after a long day of work and my, my spouse is watching Sunbelt golf on the television. Shout out Texas State. But like, I mean, seriously, like what the hell are we doing? Okay. I want to talk about this. We've talked a lot about inflated graphics, right? The baseball team posted this dumbass graphic that they made a couple weeks ago talking about the best two seasons that they ever had, right? Statistically, the best season they ever had was two years ago. That was uh, when we had the closer of the year. <laughs> uh, that you know, And when we had this year, also a pretty good year. We didn't make a super regional or anything like that, but still, statistically, pretty good year. You put Solid both of those years season. back to back, no shit. Those are the best two years we've ever had as a program. Wins. <laughs> Batting average, ERA, whatever. I mean, this is going to be amazing, right? The tennis team, 3.62 GPA, highest sports GPA among Texas State athletics in the spring of 2023. Now, the football team also retweeted a graphic. Women's tennis team, highest GPA, 3.62. Best spring GPA in baseball history. Baseball, no GPA though. I can't see the actual GPA. Men's golf, best spring GPA in team history. Can't see the GPA though. Football, second best spring GPA in team history. Again, can't see the GPA. Softball, best in five years and second best spring GPA ever. <laughs> they didn't show that one either. No. The only real ones are Texas State tennis. So we, know what the, we know what the bar is. So it's we know two, what tennis is a 3-6, right? I think it's like 2-5 two two? for eligibility, right? Okay, yes. The eligibility is 2-5. Yeah, or I think 2 is it two five or two? Yeah, you're right. I think it might be even lower than that. I'll it's look like it up two. and I'll pop it up right here. Yeah. So we know what the peak is. We don't know what the, we we might know what the bottom is. So it's somewhere in between there. I have to imagine that it's all of these are three and up. I and have we should to we should preface this right because the, of course the bigger teams are going to have the lower GPA. It's statistically, you know, well, averages averages are sensitive to. The big and high, low numbers in them. Some, some, some are like that. <laughs> some are like that. Yeah, I think the Yale football team is not having the same trouble we are, for sure. Yeah, but the whole point, this is the point, right? The GPA thing is great. Okay, we want the student athletes to be students. We want them to be great. Okay, 
All of that is completely fair. The point is, why post this? Like, I, I get to the, I don't know. For a fan, I don't care, right? Like, do you care? Do you really care, like, about the GPA? Well, I guess at the end of the if day, it's, right, it's like the Bobcat Club is raising money for scholarships. Yeah. And at the end of the day, they want to see scholar kind of work come out of it, you know? I guess. I don't uh, I I understand it. And you know what? We have student athletes who are wanting to be traveling nurses. We got student athletes who graduate and then immediately go into business and they get their MBAs. And so, you know, or what Jeff am I? Foster, right? Like he yeah. had an MBA career and then he's this huge finance guy. And that's when he was able to give back. Obviously, there was some MBA money involved. In let, that me, too. let me ask you, would you trust Jeff Foster with your money or would you trust Kat Osherman to sell your house? Which one do you trust more? Oh, I think both. Like if I really needed to, boom, boom. That's a safe answer. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Okay. So anyway, all right. I understand the GPS are important, all that good stuff. Um, I don't know. These graphics. I just, if yeah. you're going to be that proud of it, just post the GPA, you know? Just post the GPA. Let, expose the GPA. But I think it's because they've been flamed in years past. Like when they do post the actual GPA, everyone's like, what the fuck? Why are we celebrating this? And it's just ratio, ratio, ratio. Well, and then you see, then look, then you don't do it and you get two idiots on a podcast telling you that you should. So it's like, you can't no. win. No. I don't know. No. It's not, I mean, I understand it. And like, if what team should have the best GPA, you think? Golf. Golf? Golf and tennis? Golf. Golf. Uh, golf. Tennis, I don't really care. Golf should. That's like, that's a sport that, like, you know, you you should have plenty of time to hit the books. It's my point. <laughs> <laughs> for golf. in between like, rounds <laughs> there's no reason for you not to be able to hit the books in golf football should have the lowest because i was surprised was, track wasn't on there actually too they usually are all, the more the most athletes track usually makes a lot of yeah, the academic really, lists too so i was yeah. kind of surprised i didn't see them on there but maybe it's because their season already wrapped and they didn't make that graphic category golf should be one every year no excuses number two should be women's basketball because of how much they talk about it like I, Ooh. I've never. They they talk about how like studious their students are all the time. So that should be number two, just in my off the top of my head. Everybody else could be third. It doesn't really matter. Football yeah. should be last because there's so many of them. Like, you know, there that that should be the excuse. There's whatever a hundred thousand guys that play football. So that should be last. You know what sucks too is if it it doesn't matter if right we just have a signing class of what what is it fifty two. I'm just say fifty two. Whatever. We have fifty two, fifty three, fifty four, fifty five guys that are signed as a scholarship players. But then you have walk-on guys and practice squad guys. Those guys still count for Team GPA. So yeah. that also kind of tanks it a little bit, too. I And you can parse college. it out as, as much as you'd like, too. But G.J. Kinney also gets paid, too, based off Team GPA. So that's also why it kind of matters, too. Mm, does he really? There's like yeah, a stipulation it's, it's a part of his thing. stipulation on the contract, yeah. That sucks. That's why college coaching sucks. It's hard. He's <laughs> like... There's so I many would, factors that impact you. Know, like, I overall. barely trust. I barely trust these guys to like know the plays, and now I expect them to like go to class. Like that's tough, you know. Cornell Jones said it best. I don't play. I don't play school. I play football. <laughs> it's like the Kenny Powers thing when he's yeah. Like, what am I trying to do? The be, be the best at working out. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. I have a I got a, a guy that I went to high school with that's trying to be the best at working out. It's like, what are you doing, dude? <laughs> He like he put on like thirty five pounds over like the last year do, doing creatine and I think HGH he looks fucking swole. I'm like, hey, all right, shout dude. out Peyton Manning, man. That looks natural. Shout out Peyton Manning. Shout out his wife, who he was receiving packages under her name. And... Guy has neck surgery, has two discs put together, and all of a sudden he's throwing fifty five touchdowns. All right, I got a phone call from Barry on the other line. You know. <laughs> cool. Those are all the things I really wanted to talk about, Zim. You got anything else? Um, I know that we're playing Sam Houston State. That was uh, that was you giving me grief. That's fine. Uh, the Sports Radio Bible available everywhere. Not everywhere, just on Amazon. But every, I mean, Amazon is everywhere now. So like, go, go buy it on Amazon. Um, if you see me on television, take a photo and send it to at Squaring Pod, and uh, we'll shout you out. Are you doing a press tour for your book? I am doing a press tour for the book. I'm going to be everywhere. So San Antonio is where I know for one for sure where I'm going to be on the San Antonio station. Um, is it mine? One, 
It's not your me down. Um, it's one of them. Mine shot you down. Uh, and also that'll be fun because now you can now you can watch every one of them and find out where my face will be. That's Look fun. for me on TV. That's far. Sick. Okay, cool. Well, sweet guys. This is squaring around on the Republic of Texas football network. Thanks for watching, everybody. This was an ROF? Yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> Thanks for listening. New episodes out every Thursday. Follow the boys on Twitter. Eat them up. Eat them up.